Hello, my name is Wade Nomura and this is Rotary Serving Our Community. This year uh, over New Year's I had the opportunity to work with the float committee and this is the Rotary Rose Parade float committee and with us today we have a special guest, Ray Bushnell. Ray, welcome. Wade, thank you. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, what you do for a living and... Uh, I run a uh, printing and mailing service primarily helping nonprofits with uh, fundraising and marketing, branding, and uh, I've been involved uh, Rotary since 1990, and I've been uh, on the uh, float committee for about 20 years. Wow. So how'd you get involved with Rotary? Uh, these guys I played racquetball with. Oh, really? They, they, yeah, they, five or six of them are always talking about Rotary, invited me to a few meetings, and, uh, and it just seemed like a, like a great idea. <laughs> and, uh, and so here I am. Good, so. good. And uh, the club that you belong to, because you're down, from down south, right? Yeah, yeah I'm from uh, Arcadia. Is Arcadia, my home club. okay. Yeah. okay got it, got it. Started out there and stayed there ever since. So tell me how you got involved with the actual float committee. Well, Conrad Von Biebra called me up one day. Uh, he's a PDG from 5300 from our district, and he wanted to talk to me about how I could help uh, Rotary and get more involved. He didn't want, give me anything real specific. <laughs> and he came out, and we had a meeting at my office, and he, he, he pitched this thing very eloquently and talked about uh, how important it is to promote Rotary and that he thought I could uh, make, a, make a big impact, a bigger impact than I was making with my club alone. And uh, at the very end of it, he said, what I'm talking about is the Rose Parade. And I, I said, oh, well, okay. <laughs> and uh, so I got involved uh, just as a committee member for a few years, went on the board, and, uh, and I was actually chair of the committee in, uh, for the 2008 float. Wow. Okay, great, great. Now, as far as Rotary and uh, the float, tell us a little bit how those relate. Now, is the float your primary project that you do for Rotary, or do you do other projects also? I'm very involved with float. That's uh, I do a little bit of stuff with my club, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, the the float is very big to me. I, I spend a lot of time on that. The marketing of it, we're we're marketing to uh, to all of North America, the uh, USCB region, and uh, so it, it's a lot. It's about eight thousand clubs, mm -hmm. uh, and so we're putting the marketing materials together. It's a year round job. It's not not just a matter of a. Definitely so. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, beyond a year's job, it keeps going and going and going, Actually, doesn't it? Actually, it does, yeah. <laughs> well, um, I've got a rendering here that uh, you brought with us. Tell us a little bit about this one. And go ahead and show that one here to the audience. This is uh, from the 2017 float. It's uh, a, a traveling dragon. We've got uh, some, some spectacular floral presentation on here. And uh, on this traveling dragon, we've got the uh, uh, six areas of focus that Rotary's primarily working on around the world. Okay. Uh, this float had uh, some animation to it. The tail moved back and forth. The eyelids fluttered. Uh, there was a uh, smoke blast out, of, out okay. of his nose. And how do you actually select the, the rendering? In other words, I believe this is a, one of a set of maybe 60 that we saw as a committee, right? That's correct. And then you pick out the one that you want from Phoenix Company, right? Exactly, okay. exactly. Phoenix Decorating is our builder, and mm -hmm. they present to us some ideas in a, in a wide variety of ways. And uh, this one was a, was a whimsical rendition of, mm -hmm. of, a, of a message that, that we could send. It's, uh, it's important from a float standpoint that the, that the float look nice. That gets us attention. You know, the hope is that, that we've got something that's very attractive, that people won't turn away from and look at what's next, but mm -hmm. they'll really be focused on that. And this certainly did it. I mean, okay. this, was a, you know, this was a very colorful piece. And... And it really captured the attention of... of so I see the, uh, the baggage has the six pictures right there with the uh, areas of focus. Those are uh, the Rotary Foundation's view of improving humanity. You have the, the uh, float with the globe in front, but where did the dragon come from? You know, the dragon was a, was a kind of a mythical creature, uh, just a traveling dragon. He's friendly. He's got a, a nice smile on his face. Uh, he's got the uh, medallion for the 100 years of the Rotary Foundation around his neck. It's, uh, uh, the, the, the idea really behind the, behind the whole parade is that it's a fantasy. Right. Uh, and, and this is a, you know, just a one piece of the, of the overall view of the, of the parade theme, which was Echoes of Success. And uh, certainly our foundation's been successful, and uh, hopefully the dragon made it around the world and, <laughs> and doing good. Very true. Well, let's jump into some of the pictures because we want to take this, the actual rendering, into the actual float itself. So the first picture we have is a picture of the construction of the float. This was, uh, I believe, one of the work nights where we had interactors or high school kids working. 
Yeah, the uh, interactors are a huge part of our volunteer force. Okay. Uh, we have usually about uh, 800 volunteers, uh, usually about 6,000 uh, man hours wow. uh, on, on decorating. Mm -hmm. And it's everything from, from slicing up flowers to actually gluing stuff on the float. Mm -hmm. The, uh, the entire float at the end of the, or the beginning of the parade, actually at the end of the, the building sessions, has to be covered completely with organic materials. Mm. There can be no, no inorganic materials or metals or anything showing. Okay. And uh, that's what our interactors do and other volunteers uh, from clubs around the, around the region. Okay. The next picture we have, again, is um, a larger view showing some of the workforce there. I believe we have as many as 60 people working, sometimes on one shift. Yes. Each minute then. That, that's amazing. Towards the end, the shifts get uh, longer. They work actually around the clock, 24 okay. hours. Wow, wow. Okay. And uh, the next picture we have shows a picture of the, um, I guess if some of our committee members putting the sign back on us, the Rhodey Foundation sign there. Yeah, the foundation hey. sign was actually made out of uh, a rice background with blueberries. That's okay. the, uh, the rotary part of it. And then there were uh, lentils and beans on the, on the rotary wheel. Got it, got it. And the significance was that this year was the 100-year anniversary of the Rhodey Foundation, Yes, correct? 2017 marks 100 years of the foundation. Oh, very nice. Yeah. Next picture we have shows the saddlebags, uh, the saddlebags on, on the back of the dragon, along with you talked about the symbols on that one. So uh, that one there was that, I would say since it's a picture, how did you convey the message of what those symbols represented? Yeah, the, the uh, messaging is also carried forward by the commentators on TV and any other materials that we distribute to Rotary Clubs and to other people around. So the, the idea uh, for that messaging is probably more internal than, than external. Okay. Uh, so they, they did talk about, uh, on, on some of the networks, about the, uh, the six areas of focus exactly. that, that Rotary is currently involved so in. So actually, you do give scripts out to the media then. There's media packages specific with that message. We do. We do. Okay. And, and it's, uh, it's up to the media to, to kind of interpret that. Sometimes we get more time. Sometimes we get less. Sure. Sure. Uh, but they usually do a, a, a very good job of representing exactly uh, what Rotary is about. Great. Outstanding. Next picture we have is a, a picture of the president, John German, and his wife, uh, Judy, Showing off the T-shirts, so you actually put them to work, is what I've, I've heard. <laughs> they did. They did do some work. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The president uh, always has a very full schedule, but particularly around the Rose Parade, they do a lot of stuff, and and that includes some of the some of the decorating on the float itself. That that is great. By the way, in the background, I think that's uh, that's my van back there, right? And, uh, I believe it is. We, he drive the <laughs> president around. He gets the VIP on that one. <laughs> the next picture we have is. Um, of the float, I believe, as it was getting finished, right? Is this close to the um, actual completion? That's very close to being done, yes. The, the uh, scaffolding has all been removed, and the, you know, it's really coming together. The, mm -hmm. you know, the, uh, the colors are really, really popping, and, right. and this, is, this is very close to but done. It's still in the barn, as mm -hmm. you can see from the background. Uh, but, but, yeah, it's close, very, very close. That is good. Now, what's unique, I found out about the floats, is that they actually do a color, a color of the float itself when it's still in the foam stage. So they, I could identify what colors are going to be changed to what and where the flowers go. So I thought that was pretty clever. Exactly. It's almost like a paint by number. At exactly. The end of the, but you put flowers on. Yeah. <laughs> and then the next picture shows the uh, president and his wife actually sitting where they were seated during the parade itself. Mm -hmm. And uh, could you tell us a little bit about how they fit, how that, that was significant to where they sat on that float? Uh, they were up in the front. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and leading, as the president does with, mm -hmm. with Rotary, leading our organization. And uh, it's become a tradition uh, a few years ago, or going way back in, in time. Sometimes we didn't have any walkers, or any walkers, riders, or, or anything. Right. And it's become a tradition, and I think it's great. Uh, the involvement of the Rotary president as a leader is uh, Agreed. Agreed. really important. I worked uh, the first year we had one on was Kelly and Banerjee. And um, because of his, it, since that time, I think every president's been on that float. So I think it would be a tradition it, from this it, point it, I believe it's that is correct. That is great. Uh, next picture we have actually is of the judging. And so tell us a little bit about the judging process, because that's, I would say, pretty uh, well scripted. They, they definitely hold tight to their schedules. They do, yeah. The, uh, the, the judging panel is actually uh, comprised of people from the Tournament of Roses and they uh, have criteria they're looking for, uh, entertainment value, uh, and, and uh, beauty, use of flowers. Mm -hmm. There's uh, about 24 awards, I believe, okay. that, are, that are possible. And uh, they'll look at how the riders and walkers fit in. 
uh, to the overall theme of the float. And there's a, there's a, a fairly involved set of, of criteria that they look at okay. to, to award a, a float. Good. And um, this is judged by different judges each year. So somebody selects those judges. The criteria seems to be a little bit different each and every year. That's correct. Okay. And they also do a pre-judge where they actually look at the flowers themselves the day before. Mm -hmm. And then this one here is actually is a completed one. Yeah. I think they've got up to four rounds if they need it. Okay. So they, they take a vote after, after rounds. I think they have up to right. four. Well, what we have, I um, want to cut to this real quickly, though. We have a little video showing the actual judging itself and how that goes all the way up until a bell that rings signifying that's the end of it. And it's, I would say, very formal and mm -hmm. very official. So with that, let's, let's cut to that real quick. At the end of that one, when we took a look at that, did you, would you have to actually have the float judging itself? No, I wasn't there that day. Okay, okay. Uh, Which was, uh, I, I would say, pretty, pretty impressive. Uh, it, it seemed like there was a little a hint that they enjoy the float. Uh, sure. A little bit of smiling going on, a little more clapping than usual. I understand right? that there was some applause. <laughs> right, which is not traditional, <laughs> not, not traditional. standard. <laughs> okay, the next picture we have actually is... Um, on the float day, uh, early morning, this is probably taken about 6 o'clock in the morning, uh, still freezing cold over there. I don't know how you guys live in that kind of, it is chilly. Kind of cold weather there. Um, but we were staging in at that time, and actually KTLA came in and did an interview with the president. I don't know if you got to see some of the footage. Of I have that. seen some of that, yes. Okay. Um, Very nice. And at that time, they were actually taking a look at the float right in front of us, which was the sweepstakes one, the dole float. Mm -hmm. And the girl came over, the reporter came over, and she goes, actually, do you know where the people are for the dole float? And I <laughs> says, I don't, but this is the rotary float. And you know, she goes, well, you know, we'll talk about this, but you guys won an award. I go, we won the, the princess award. And she says, well, 
I'm really supposed to be doing that float over there, but tell us a little bit about this. And so I asked her, she goes, well, actually, I'm a Rotarian. So we hooked her that way. Excellent. I go, well, this is the international president. You probably want to interview him. So that's how we got the airtime on that one. Excellent. <laughs> Great. And then the next picture we have actually is a float coming down the parade route. Uh, actually very impressive because you had the smoke coming out of the, uh, the nose and the eyes are blinking. Um, now, were you actually at the float, uh, the parade itself? I was. Did you view it? Okay. Yeah. We were in the, in the uh, VIP grandstands. Okay. Right and, there. And what did you think? Oh, it was excellent. Oh, yeah. Excellent. It, it was. was. Very good parade. The, oh, overall, I think it was one of the best. I, agreed. I, I think so, too. Uh, and then the next picture we have actually shows the Princess Trophy. And um, so tell us a little bit about that. What is the Princess Trophy? The Princess Trophy is awarded for the most beautiful float under 35 feet. So there are classification, size classifications of floats um, up to 55 feet. Okay. Uh, so our float is in the 35 foot category and the Princess Trophy is actually named after the Rose Princesses. Ah, okay. And although they don't judge it, the, the regular judging crew does this, they've got uh, this Princess Trophy is for the most beautiful float uh, under 35 feet. Great. And uh, I thought I'd bring this up also for you. Um, what's the trophy look like? Well, the trophy, <laughs> there is no, no, no bowling trophy or softball trophy. Uh, the uh, banner is actually the, is actually the award. It signifies the award. Yeah, yeah. and it's, uh, it's more just a figure. Of, exactly, exactly. Uh, um, I did bring a picture with us on, on the bottom there that shows what we do get. So each year the committee receives um, a framed picture of the actual float itself. So yeah, that's that very nice. nice. Yeah. It is yeah, a very I, nice. One. I've got mine hanging in my office, and it's one of my mo yeah. most treasured possessions. Yeah. I, I brought mine here to the studio. Hopefully, <laughs> we could see it. But uh, those things weigh a lot, by the way. They it's do. Pretty heavy. <laughs> I'm glad you don't have to move it. <laughs> <laughs> the next picture we have is uh, one of the walkers, and um, it shows her with a suitcase, I believe, made out of cardboard, mm -hmm. with the N Polio Now um, sign on that. So tell us a little bit about how that tied into the theme. Well, the foundation has been instrumental in the eradication of polio. And the, uh, the end polio now campaign will stay in force until polio is eradicated. Okay. And uh, so symbolizing uh, you know, the, the travels that people have done, the, the immunization days that they've done, uh, these, these uh, travelers kind of fit in. Right? The, all of the people that were involved on walking or riding on the float were dressed in a costume of local places. and. Uh, so the, the end polio now is a, an additional way to kind of extend the footprint of the float and get an get a important message across to the public. Got it. Uh, so again, part of the efforts of the foundation itself is being, well, end polio now is their number one exactly. objective. Yeah. Good. And um, you, you said that the walkers and riders were actually in international costume. Is that correct? Yes. Now, how did they select that or how were they selected to, to do that? Each, each walker picked their own area that they wanted to focus on okay. and, uh, and created their own costume and, uh, and brought that as, as part of their, uh, you know, their contribution to the float. Got it. Okay. So that was on their own dollar that either they find one or had to rent one. It was, yes. <laughs> yeah. It was a nice touch, by the way. It looked great. Oh, it really does show Rotary's international um, efforts, mm -hmm. so I like that one. The next picture we have actually is um, part of a footage that came from KTLA 5, which um, covered the the float for us. Mm -hmm. Now this year, very unique, is that we had our float covered by just about every major network. Oftentimes we end up on the cutting floor behind the advertisement or commercial break. It can happen, yeah. yeah. And uh, that's, uh, this, this particular float was among the most beautiful we've had. Yeah. And uh, the fact that we did win the uh, Princess Trophy gives us a little bit of extra air time. You know, they, 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 do, they do generally cover very well, all of the, all the award winners, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and uh, this uh, this particular picture that you're talking about right here. This is right at, at the corner, and there's about seven hundred thousand people uh, that line the parade route. And I, I I've never ridden on the float or, or walked along with it, but I understand that at at that turn where you look down the boulevard, uh, down Colorado Boulevard, and you just see this mass of, of people there. It's very inspiring. It, it is uh, impressive, to say the least. It is definitely something you will uh, never forget. Yeah, yeah it is. We've got to get you on the float one of these times, then. Yeah. yeah that, <laughs> You're going to have to ride it. You worked this hard. You yeah, the, the committee has definitely extended the offer. I haven't, good, good, I haven't taken advantage of it. Good yeah. to hear. And then uh, with KTLA, also ABC, uh, I heard, uh, and their affiliates covered it also quite well. So 
They did. We got about a three-minute uh, featurette uh, where they had taken some footage off-site, off, off the parade site, and, and worked that in okay. with it as well. Good. Now, now tell me this. We look at an audience of close to, I think, the television audience is about 70 million people, close to that. It's actually 70 million households. Wow. So there could wow. be more than one person in okay. the household okay. watching. So, so with that kind of time, um, we already couldn't have gone wrong with what it cost them. So. <laughs> no, absolutely not. It's a great value. It, it is a yeah. huge value. Outstanding. The next picture we have is a picture of the actual committee. Um, this is the evening before usually is the case of, of the parade itself. So tell us a little about the committee. Uh, how is that comprised? Who serves on that? The committee uh, exists uh, and has existed for, for years since uh, uh, the Wilshire Club first envisioned putting a, a float in the parade. And uh, the committee consists of a board of directors that's in charge of governing the, the actual committee itself and also uh, advisors. The districts that, can, that, that are made up from uh, San Diego to up, to, up here to, to Santa Barbara area and out to Vegas, um, there's about six districts there. All of those committees are, are all of those districts, I'm sorry, are, are represented on the committee, as well as some national advisors from around the country. Okay. So the committee can be very large. Uh, we have uh, uh, subcommittees that work on, like, like I do on the marketing, there's a subcommittee that works on uh, the, the design, selecting the design, and uh, also the, the Part, the uh, committee dinner that we have, there's an, another uh, section that works on that. So it's very involved. It's, uh, we meet once a month. A lot of moving parts uh, then. A lot of moving parts <laughs> on that committee, yes, sir. Well, that is good. So this is actually probably just a, a small portion of the committee itself then. It is. These are the people that actually attended the dinner. The dinner. That okay. That yeah. okay, that sounds good. Now, one thing other that's very unique about it, the committee also hosts what's called the International Summit. So tell us just a real quick one. What is that one, the International President's Summit? The International President's Summit is very powerful, uh, and the committee does host that, like you said. Uh, it's made up of the presidents from Lions, Kiwanis, Optimist, and Rotary. And they have an opportunity to meet at uh, a private venue. Uh, we had it at the uh, Huntington Gardens this year. Uh, and they can discuss basically whatever they want. It's, uh, it's one of the only times that these uh, four organizations are able to meet in something like this. That's why we've grown to call this the summit. And the, the philanthropic power of the four organizations' foundations is enormous. And the amount of, of volunteer manpower that they represent is, is just, it's astonishing. Wow, wow, that is impressive. So... You say it takes a whole year, actually probably more than that, to organize the, this specific event. Tell us how it's funded. The funding comes from primarily the seed funding, the startup funding comes from the six Rotary districts that are in Southern California. And then we go out to every other club uh, from Canada and, and all across the United States. And uh, we have a fundraising effort. Okay. No money uh, comes from Rotary International, uh, although they do support this, uh, you know, and they help us a great deal. The funding really comes from clubs and districts that understand the real value of, of promoting Rotary and how important that is on a global scale. Wow. Wow. So we're talking, uh, and by the way, what's the cost of that, something like this? Well, the average float in the, uh, in the Rose Parade is $250,000. Our float uh, this year was uh, about one hundred and fifty. dollars So we're, we're, we're below the average mm -hmm. of, of what uh, some, some organizations spend on that. And then we've got some other marketing costs. And so we had about a $200,000 budget this year. About a $200,000 budget. Again, that's all privately funded. No, yes, sir. No assistance from Rotary International. Uh, is, and... $200,000 for that much airtime internationally, that, that's a huge... <laughs> if you had to thing. buy that, you couldn't... Uh, <laughs> you couldn't touch no. it. <laughs> you couldn't touch it. Um, the last one we have actually is a flyer showing um, some information on, on the float itself, the amount of people it's reached in households, and uh, some of the fundraising efforts, along with a quote from President John Germ. So tell us a little bit about the committee. Now, how does the committee structure to actually try and fundraise this? Are there separate ways? Um, 
or is it something where it's just all ask? We've got a lot of different things that we do. Uh, some, some districts will actually uh, raise money to put a rider on the float or, or a okay. walker. Okay. That's, uh, there are, are some people who just absolutely would adore to ride the float. And, yeah. and they're, they're sometimes difficult to find. But, uh, but they've been, in recent years, have been a bigger part of our fundraising effort than, than they were in the, in the early days. Uh, also, clubs understand the value of uh, membership opportunities and for people to just know a little bit more about Rotary. We all do a lot of things for, for public relations. You know, we wear our Rotary pins. We've got signs in front of the city, you know, welcome to your city. And there's a sign of the service organizations there. And those are all efforts, just like this is. Sure. Sure. So uh, it's interesting, the membership applications increase for Rotary in times when Rotary is more in the public eye. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't mean that every club is going to get a new member because we had a float, but it's interesting that applications do go up at a time when there's, when there's more activity in the, in the media. Sure. Well, actually, I heard of um, a number of occasions where people saw the float and actually looked for Rotary clubs. And when I say that, there's quite a few that I've heard of out mm -hmm. there from different clubs saying that, you know what, they came looking for us because of the float they saw in the message. Yeah, that's great. So that is huge. And unfortunately, we can't measure that. They have no idea. Very difficult to measure. It, it really is. But um, that, that, there again, the float itself, some people ask why, but I think it puts it out on an international platform for people to see along with the message. It does. PR is, you know, it's, like you said, it's very difficult to measure, but it's extremely important. Uh, I'll give you an example. The milk, uh, uh, milk board, I think it's the milk board, had a float in the parade this year. Uh, everybody's heard of milk. Yeah. You know, there's no, they're not getting any, any new customers because they, they put a float out there. It's just important to elevate your organization on a global scale and remind people that right. you're there. And that's what we've done. Well, thank you very much, Ray, for your time and effort, by the way. I sure appreciate it. Certainly, Mike. Um, Outstanding float. Again, uh, congratulations to you and the committee for all the great work you've done. Well, thank you so much. And uh, again, well, we'll be in touch with you at the next meeting. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> with it, everybody, thank you very much. Thanks for watching the Rose, Rose Parade and seeing it float itself on TV. We hope you enjoyed that. And again, we can use your help on that. It's a fundraiser that we do all year long. With that, thank you very much, and we'll see you next time.